The events of this story begin in a rather unconventional place, namely in the middle of a dense forest somewhere in the mountains. Our hero, whose name is Carl, is lying on the ground completely unconscious. I wonder how he got here and what happened to him. Let's find out. After some time, Carl still managed to come to himself. Initially he just opened his eyes and tried to get up, and when he looked around, he realized that he was in a completely unknown place for himself, around only huge trees, a lot of birds, and various animals. Now his head is filled with a whole host of questions, such as what happened, who he is, and so on. This one speaks directly to the fact that the hero has lost his memory. Suddenly a new notification comes to his phone. At least it was already nice to know that the guy had some means of communication. Carl decided not to hesitate, and immediately pulled it out to see who had texted him. The message came from some unknown subscriber, and the sender talked to him as if they had known each other for one hundred years. He asked if Carl was awake, and then informed him that the sun would be setting soon, and that it was advisable to get out of the forest by then. To be honest, Carl didn't like the fact that a person from an unknown number was writing to him, so he decided to trust the contacts, in case there was someone else there. But as you might expect, the list was completely empty. It seemed as if someone had prepared this phone for some specific purpose. What in such a case it was decided to answer? The guy apologized and politely inquired who he was dealing with. In response to this he saw only a request to get out of the woods as soon as possible before sunset, also he was told how to do it as fast as possible. Such treatment made Carl quite angry, he even asked who it was, and assumed that someone was watching him. Practically at this moment, a new message arrives on his phone, in which an unknown subscriber says that yes, he is really watching Carl, and asks him to believe it. In this case, the guy had nothing else to do but to follow the instructions of his guide, because no matter how it goes, but to stay in the forest is not the best idea. After a few minutes he managed to get to the road, on what to do next. As soon as Carl gets the slightest bit confused, the guidebook tells him right away. Right now, he asked the boy to catch a car to get to the city. Since there was simply no other way out, so far Carl adheres to all the instructions, but the question is how long it will be enough. When the boy finally arrived, he walked around the city like an abandoned dog and had no idea what to do next. It didn't take long, though. The unknown man asked him to go to the Jongak station, and if Carl was hungry, he could go to a cafeteria, which should be enough money for everything. After such a long hibernation in the forest, of course the guy was hungry, so as soon as he heard about the proposal to eat, immediately turned to the nearest cafeteria. To be frank, our hero is quite worried. It seems to him that if he does not find out soon with whom he communicates, he may go crazy. Even at mealtimes, eating delicious yet unhealthy food, Carl felt no joy at all. He looked so bad that from the outside you could think of him as having lost all the life inside him. At one point he picks up his phone again and writes a rather radical message in which he says that if the unknown normal does not explain what is going on, the guy will soon go to the police. The answer did not take long to wait, according to the interlocutor, at the moment Carl is infected with a terrible virus. Allegedly some other carrier has raised him, and against this background the kid lost his memory. Also unknown and told that when the hero decided to live a normal life, he had a family and a job. Then, to confirm his words, the interlocutor sent a photo of his wife. Carl looked at all this and just could not believe that all this horror was really happening to him. The interlocutor also added that the guy would definitely not remember anything, because this unique virus was developed by order of the government. After reading all this breda, at least that's what Carl thought. He puts his hand in his pocket to see how much money he has left, and when he realizes that he has enough for everything, he puts his phone on the edge of the table and slowly starts to walk away. So far, the guy does not agree to believe in what is happening, and even the fact that he does not remember anything, he does not care. From the outside it looks like some kind of scary prank that got out of hand. As a result, when Carl left the place, he immediately ran to the nearest cab. According to his assumptions, 
The unknown subscriber is following him solely with his phone, so if it is left in the cafe, in fact, no one should know that Carl actually left the building. Now he plans to go to the nearest police station to make a statement. The hero was very radical, because he knew that the truth was on his side, and he would do his best to make this whole nightmare end. To be honest, the cab driver was even a little scared, and decided to ask if everything was okay. After this question, Carl immediately pulled himself together and said that everything was fine. The guy managed to get to the police station pretty quickly. But before entering it, in his head began to come quite logical questions, what to do now and how to explain to the police what happened to him. After all, his whole story will look like the ravings of some man-man. Carl also lost his memory, and he doesn't remember anything. But despite this he decided to open the door and enter the police station. Coincidentally, a policeman opened the door very unexpectedly, and it just scared the hell out of the guy. The scene was like something out of a scary movie. But still, when the hero realized it was just a cop, he apologized and said he was scared. Then the guy said he was in big trouble and asked if he could get help here. In response, the officer silently pulled out a walkie-talkie, said he'd found the guy and was going to take his life right now. As luck would have it, Carl heard these words, but at first he didn't take them seriously, because as a rule you should expect help from police officers, not something bad. But when the officer reaches for his gun, the guy immediately jumps out of his seat and starts running in an unknown direction. Carl also just insanely lucky that he met far from the most accurate officer, because the one even at point-blank range could not make an accurate shot. The guy even had time to run an indignant, well, at least he cannot understand how a police officer can afford to shoot on peaceful citizens. The policeman, in turn, like crazy, he did not react to Carl's words, but just kept chasing him. Then, as strange as it may sound, but the guy heard the phone received several new notifications. But how is this even possible? Because Carl deliberately left him in the cafe. But anyway, this is definitely not the time to raise a lot of unnecessary questions it's best to pull out your phone and see what it says. Unfortunately, as soon as the guy did that, by some miracle the policeman still managed to hit his arm. Luckily it wasn't some vital organ. At that moment, he was overjoyed, despite the fact that he managed to hit only once out of the entire clip. As soon as the opportunity arose, Carl immediately opened his phone and saw a new message from an unknown person. The guy was asked to look to the right, where the blue car should be standing. It's bulletproof itself, so you should run to it as soon as possible, and sit down, it's just the perfect hiding place for such an occasion. This time the guy decided not to ignore his guide, and did as he said. By the way to the fact that the car is armored Carl was quite skeptical, but when he saw that the bullets just ricochet, he was very pleasantly surprised, frankly speaking such a strong fear guy has never experienced, and as soon as he came to his senses a little immediately picked up the phone, and began to ask what he'd do next. To such a bright desire to communicate, the unknown man responded with a very happy reaction, and added that if Carl had listened to him in the first place, this would not have happened. Meanwhile, the guy was not laughing at all. He was so scared that he was willing to do whatever the unknown man asked him to do to stay in one piece. In this case, the guide decided not to delay long and immediately asked the guy for a very serious favor, namely to go and blow up some government buildings. To say that Carl was in shock this is simply not to say anything, in a moment his world just turned upside down, will have to be a criminal until the end of days. The boy decided to ask again, in case it was a joke, but unfortunately it was not, in case Carl refused or tried to escape, he would probably not be able to survive. Then in the rearview mirror the kid saw how the flower on the police run to open the car in which he is. So without wasting a minute of time, he decides to get behind the wheel and start moving in an unknown direction, only to go as far as possible away from these frantic officers. On the way, he began to ask the unknown person how the phone had ended up in his pocket. Carl was 100% sure that he had left it there and now he was just wondering how the guide had managed to get it back in his pocket. For some reason this question was never answered. 
The unknown man said he would answer a little later, but for now, the guy should be grateful, at least for the fact that he was saved. It would seem that in such a desperate situation. At least in this he is exactly right. When Carl had finally calmed down a little, he had already started asking questions that were relevant to the upcoming mission. At the very least, he wanted to know where he could get enough explosives to blow up three buildings. The answer to that question came rather quickly, as it turned out that the bomb had already been planted in this car. The bomb is very well hidden, at least that can be understood from the fact that the car is fully armored. Deep down, Carl knew he was talking to a real psycho. Meanwhile, the police decided not to just give up and got on their tail. They had no problem catching up with the guy, because he was driving quite slowly, despite the fact that this car is already wanted. In order to catch Carl, as many as five patrol cars were already out. Because of the panic, the guy starts screaming and mindlessly presses on the gas. To be frank, it can end very badly. An inattentive driver with a car with a bomb in it, in case he crashes somewhere hard, can bring a lot of grief. Suddenly, one more sixth patrol car comes out of the corner right in front of him. It would seem impossible to dodge at such a speed. But our hero turned out to be really lucky. At the very last moment he manages to jerk the steering wheel to the right, and thus avoid collision. Just a good job, our hero must have been a good driver before he woke up in the woods. As soon as a long straight line appeared, he clutched the steering wheel with all his might and began to press the gas pedal to the floor. It was clear from his face that he had no intention of getting caught by the cops today. After just a few minutes of such aggressive driving, the navigator began to show that it was only a short distance to the National Council building. At the very end of the trip, Carl found himself on a very busy street with too many pedestrians. They also turned out to be very aggressive, not letting the guy pass and telling him how bad he was because he was breaking traffic rules. To try and save their lives somehow. Carl opened the window and started asking them to get off the road. Unfortunately, too much kindness played a cruel trick on the guy. As soon as he opened the window the policeman took advantage of it and fired a shot. Luckily he didn't manage to hit the head, but still the bullet hit his ear. How painful it was just cannot be conveyed in words, here you can only imagine. The guide wrote the guy to get rid of this overly aggressive man as soon as possible, because he's frankly jeopardizing the whole operation. Without thinking long, Carl closes the window, grips the steering wheel firmly with one hand, and sharply presses the gas pedal to the floor. The car so sharply off the meter that the guy with an incredible force squeezed into the seat. Apparently it is very powerful because as a rule, armored cars cannot move too fast, much less sharply start. At first everything seemed to be normal, the guy had no problem demolishing the barrier, but at one point, happened what for some reason could not foresee, namely at the intersection came a large truck, and because the speed was above the limit, to avoid collisions, it was simply impossible. And so it happened, at full speed Carl slammed into the truck. At the scene of the accident even started a small fire, which could easily lead to the detonation of a bomb planted in the car. Fortunately, all the safety systems in this car worked, and the guy was able to survive with his face in the airbag. At this point, Carl was covered in blood and sweat, telling himself that he couldn't just give up and had to do something about it. Then he came up with a slightly better idea. For example, if he just surrendered then his life would be taken away and his suffering would be over in an instant. Then Carl was overcome with intense anger. He just couldn't understand why he had to go through all this suffering, because he had never done anything bad to anyone. The guide confirmed that the guy really wasn't guilty of anything, but the problem was that it was their fault. By the word they, John Doe meant the government and some officers, like the one who couldn't hit a pistol properly at close range, and his colleagues. When the future officer was in school, he had been a bully, despising the weak in every way, and at the first opportunity he would start being one. And now, after a certain number of years, a man like him was launched into the ranks of the guardians of order, although after the things he did, it is necessary to simply destroy. According to the guidebook it was because of him and the family of Carl happened just terrible things. For example, 
the guy's brother under intense pressure just couldn't stand it and took his own life. In the trailer these words were already quite enough to hate this character, and to do everything to take revenge, he just approached the car and began to demand to open the door. Even such a seemingly situation the guy was not confused, he slowly looking into the eyes of the policeman pressed the button, then opened the door and sharply kicked him, after which the law enforcement officer fell to the ground, Carl at that moment immediately picked up his baton. The man immediately realized what would happen to him, and did not even resist. With great anger in his eyes, Carl walked up and began to strike the offender of his family with powerful blows, until he lost his life. When the late evening came, the guy was once again in the woods, at the moment he is heading straight to the National Council building. Along the way, the unknown man frantically thanks Carl for all his efforts, and what a great contribution he makes to their common cause. So after some period of time the guy managed to get to the intended point. From the outside this building looks like something intergalactic. Of course the guy wondered where he had come to, and to find out more information he decided to ask his mentor. John Doe said that the appearance of this building is not so important, and it is not necessary to pay much attention to it. At this stage, the most important thing is to prepare for the grand finale, and to blow it all up as soon as possible. And now one more important question, how to do it, if the explosives are left in the car. Before all the most interesting things are about to start, the guide decided to tell a little about the guy's family, and what happened to them in the end. In general, Carl's mother protested for a long time and wrote petitions to fire the policeman, but other people did not support her, so the conflict quickly disappeared from the public eye. Soon the mother's heart simply could not bear such injustice, and she lost her life without achieving any result. Frankly speaking, it was very hard for Carl to listen to this, so he asked her to stop and said that he would go and get a bomb. By the way, the phrase car bomb meant that Carl was the one in question. When the guy realized the meaning of the words he had just heard, he was again very angry, and after the guide once again said that he would press the detonator, he threw the phone to the ground. But as we already know it is impossible to get rid of this device. Every time it is destroyed or lost, it is almost instantly back in the hero's pocket. With tears in his eyes, Carl tried to find out why they do this to him, why he deserves such a hard fate. The guide assured the guy that he should not worry so much about it, because in fact he is already so deprived of life. Hero slowly but surely began to go crazy, and just shouted into the phone that he does not believe in everything that is happening. Suddenly, by chance, he notices a large number of armed men in the forest, all of them are very well equipped, and have some good weapons. Also in the sky flew a helicopter, which easily identified the location of Carl and began to shine a spotlight on him. In general, this whole situation says only one thing, the guy has not much time left, and it is necessary to make the right decision as soon as possible. Because there was no way out. Carl decided that the best option would already be to lose his life as a bomb than just from the path of the special forces. As soon as he got too close, some indescribable process began. The whole world seemed to freeze and began to disintegrate into small pixels, after which a notification popped up on the screen informing the user that the server had detected a critical error and could not continue working. As it turned out, all this is the work of two robots, who were just playing a computer game and competing with each other. At the moment we can see how one of them is very happy to win, and the second one just sits there and does not show any emotions. If you look closely, in the center of the table can be another small robot. As it turned out later, he is the creator of these two large robots. That is, in fact, in the game he always plays alone. But at the same time to be not so boring is created two fictional players. The name of this little genius is Rom. And the only thing that can crack him is himself. Even after centuries, no one has been able to come close to his perfection. By the way... This is what the city of Seoul looks like in the year 2125. Rom is really perfect, and most importantly, he does not stand still, but continues to make himself even better. All artificial intelligences themselves are very different. Specifically at this time they act depending on the family of friends as well as other people around them, 
they learn and develop much faster than normal humans, even in case their models are the same. In the process of learning each one of them forms its own so-called personality. For example, some may be friendlier than others. Given this enormous progress in this field, they can no longer be called just things, they may well be human friends. At this time, mainly in artificial intelligence, develop three kinds of qualities, the first is friendliness, so that they are loyal as well as pets, and sometimes even better, the second help in crisis situations, they will provide first aid, and will be able to call 102. And the third important quality is empathy. No one will be alone anymore, and in cases when a person is in a bad mood, he will always have someone to talk to, and hear nice words of support in return. It is important to realize that new robots are not just intelligence, and in the near future a large number of people will have a unique opportunity to experience how much artificial intelligence is predisposed to humans. It is also important to note that over time, new robots will be fully adapted to their owner, copying some aspects of their personality. This approach will provide maximum compatibility, and at the very least you will not annoy each other. And now, after this very nice introduction, the fun part begins. This is the contest where the robots who have been living in real families for a long time will perform. The first category is Best Pet. Let's not wait too long and let's get the world show on the road. Before the robot pets appear on stage, the presenters will have a little chat with the audience and make them even more eager to get started. In general, today there will be as many as eight participants who have been uniquely selected and are already waiting for their chance to take the coveted first place. In this case, it was decided not to delay long and invite the first participant to the stage. His name is Meow Meow, a very cute name, and fully corresponds to the appearance of the participant. In itself he is an ordinary music bot, but as soon as the owner begins to get bored, from the recorded music, he begins to create a new one. The girl immediately pretends that she likes it very much, so that the bot continues in the same spirit, and does not stop. It is in such a favorable environment, he can create really, really, really good music. His characteristics are maximized in the point of creativity. Thanks to this he does wonders. The second participant is a Robopez, named Ding Ding. It is safe to say that he looks cute, at least it already bribes, and brings a great desire to get a similar. Its specialty is that it is able to find and identify burglars, also using will mandatorily send a burglary report to the police to ensure the safety of the owner. The owner is sure if it wasn't for his pet, something bad happened in his life long ago. The main emphasis in this kid is on adaptability to the situation, he always reacts quickly and will help in time. Then we were introduced to all the other participants, but in principle none of them had any unique ability. Of course they are all very handy in many ways, but there are already quite a lot of them. So let's get straight to the most interesting part. Namely the newest artificial intelligence created by the company Neodix, named Aurora. To be frank, visually they are very similar to the very first member, but let's see how much they differ in their functions. People when they saw it were just thrilled and could not write clap. This specimen can safely hold a conversation with professors of different sciences. It is a completely new structure of the system capable of learning both humanities and mathematical sciences. Also it has a level of knowledge equal to the level of a professor. The pet also has a high sense of empathy. And if you look at the table, you can see that specifically this artificial intelligence is developed in all directions almost perfectly. Even already at the moment the popularity of weapons is just huge. And now we present the final eighth guest. The name of this pet is Dory. In itself he looks like a classic robot, which often appear in various movies. Even the public he caused some mixed reactions. People softly speaking doubted that it can be called a pet with this appearance. The most interesting thing about this robot is that its resume says that it will participate without a representative. Is it really so smart that it can do it all by itself? A little later, the presenters did reveal that this one is not a pet. It's a real medical robot. In this case, the presenters themselves were curious as to why the baby came without a representative, so they asked the robot directly to find out the answer. In response, the robot made a very sad look, 
lowered his head and said that he didn't really have an owner. After these words there was complete silence in the hall. Even the judges did not know what to say about it. In the end, after some time of silence, one of the presenters asked why the old model of the robot was rated so highly, and in general, it does not look like a friendly pet, now the question is how it passed the selection. But nevertheless, the judges were ready to give him a chance, at least they asked what Dory could do. The most important criterion by which the judges evaluate the usefulness of a robot, specifically on this show, is its ability to amuse the audience and evoke the most positive emotions in them. The naked eye could see that Dory was very worried, but there was no turning back, so he decided to show his abilities. At the push of a button, he could simultaneously feed several very important items at once. For the period of the operation, this is the best assistant. Unfortunately, people misunderstood what Dory wanted to show. Initially they were scared, and then after a while they started laughing at the kid, who was already terribly worried. Yes, of course it's not a perfect robot, but people's reactions are as wrong as possible. This kid could have saved a lot of people in his time, and he certainly didn't deserve such disrespectful treatment. At least the presenters behaved appropriately, and didn't start laughing at the poor contestant. Then the judges started clapping and wished him good luck in accomplishing his tasks. As all the pets have been introduced, it's time to vote for the best one. While the viewers are voting, the show goes on a short break and then the second part of the program will start. The directors were pleasantly surprised. The filming is going more than fine. This show is clearly waiting for a great success. In general, the fun and joy in this hall was experienced by everyone except Dory. The kid purposely stayed on stage until the last in order to at least someone worthy to pay attention to him. But instead he was asked to leave the hall as soon as possible and go to the waiting room. Behind the scenes, the producers discussed Dory's performance. In their opinion it was the most absurd. Most likely this bot will get the lowest rating in the history of the show. Because he is the only one who went on stage and showed such an absurd performance. Meanwhile, in the waiting room, Aurora decided to meet Dory. But do it as if their dialogue started completely by accident. A really sly girl. During the conversation, she praised the robot for its performance, but the selection of tricks was strange to say the least, according to her calculations, so strange behavior can scare people. And the girl also said that the chances of milking for victory is only worth 0.52%, because the whole studio laughed at him. Even in such a situation, the robot was not confused, and thanked Aurora for the statistics, and also added that victory will definitely be for him. As it turned out, she was a very sensitive girl, at least because she reacted very strongly to Dory's statement and started calling him various obscene words. Meanwhile, the people in the observation room reported that the voting process had been completed. As expected, Aurora collected the most votes. Considering that there were eight participants, she managed to collect 55% of 100% of the votes, not more than half of the votes, for just one participant. The next day, a new shoot began for the robots. Today they will go to a nursing home, and there they will prove how useful they are in normal, everyday life. This particular location will focus on testing the robot's empathy for ordinary people of age. Since they're very old, they have to be careful not to scare anyone or worse. And so task number one is to get acquainted and express your sympathy, preferably for everyone sitting in this room. The old people were not specifically warned that such unusual guests would come to them. This allowed them to keep the effect of pleasant surprise, because it is already quite rare that anyone comes to them. As soon as the works crossed the threshold, on the faces of all the residents could be seen a real sincere smile and great joy. The first to distinguish herself was a participant who can compose beautiful songs, and a large number of people immediately sat around her, and listened to her melody with pleasure. Thanks to the high level of creativity, it was possible to find the perfect tread, which is suitable for most old people. This development of events led to a great competition between the participants. Some of them also began to eat actively act and show their talents. But Aurora began to come up with a cunning plan to complain to the producer about the participants, which she softly speaking do not suit her. In the end, 
The robots made a musical show out of the ordeal, but that's not the point. Since Dory is a shy bot, he had no strong desire to join the party crowd, but instead made a much better decision. As he looked around, he saw a lonely grandmother who for some reason was having no fun at all, sitting in a wheelchair and just staring off into the distance. In order not to accidentally scare her, Dory came to her very slowly and politely asked her why she was sitting there all alone. In fact, it is not surprising, because the person is already 118 years old. She doesn't need all this fuss, she has enough to eat and drink, she doesn't need anything else at this age. Suddenly an Aurora comes up to the same grandmother and pushes Dory away. Aurora urged her to calm down and imagine that her beloved granddaughter was actually standing in front of her. Aurora realized that this was a very old person sitting in front of her, and if she could cheer her up, she would win for sure. After her grandmother reacted rather ambiguously to her request to become her granddaughter, the robot girl suggested that she become close friends and share a little about herself with each other. At a very moment she was already so much angry that she began to express at the bot far from the most cultural words. After these words, Aurora realized for sure that the case was really hard, and it would be almost impossible to get in touch with such a person. But in case the robot succeeded, she would raise her rating by 15% and even more. Surely the best solution would be to just use this situation to her advantage, to get some use out of this grandmother. To that end, the Aurora apologized for her behavior and said she wouldn't bother her again. The robot then went straight to the producer and said she wanted to do an interview. The first thing that the directors were interested to know, and probably the audience too, is how Aurora feels after her grandmother said that she hates robots and considers them soulless. In general, whoever Aurora is, she is loaded with human consciousness, which is why she, as a human, may well feel sadness. Due to the fact that the grandmother is already 118 years old, she can be understood, because at such an age it becomes much more difficult to accept something new for people. But no matter what, the little girl is still very sad, because hearing someone say that you are just a machine is the same as hearing someone say that he is not a human being. Be that as it may, the Aurora realizes that she still has to protect 118 years of her life, and undertakes to do so in a way that in no way hinders her. The directors even clapped after this speech because it was very touching and is sure to hook the viewer. When the directors stepped aside, they started demanding from the director in charge that he should allocate at least 20 minutes of clean footage for Aurora in the future program. Meanwhile, while Aurora was being interviewed, Dory continued to communicate with the evil old lady. At one point he even dared to take the grandmother's hand but it was his fatal mistake. The robot's hand was too cold, and of course, the old woman did not like it, and in anger she took her stick in her hands, and in a rude tone began to ask the robot to get out of here as soon as possible, and not to disturb her anymore. To be honest, he was scared and fell to the floor, at which point the Aurora came up to him and said that there was no way to help her, no need to waste time, and that every failure was a potential downgrade. In the end the girl hugged him and put him on his feet. Then she urged him not to try so hard, because any actions of Dory only spoil the show. By the way, in the future, such a gesture will play into Aurora's hands because the other old people saw how she even manages to help her friends. As a result, the kid stood aside all the time and was afraid to approach anyone. Because of the intense desperation to do any good, for a while the Dory stood at the other end of the room as a pet Chaz, only occasionally returning his eyes to see what the situation around him was like. After a certain period of time, the little one gathered courage and again went to that very evil grandmother, but even his sad face did not help him. The old woman immediately began with rudeness. Despite the good intentions of the little one, the only thing he really wished was that the old woman would let him help her for her. But all he got in return for his kindness was rudeness and another blow with a stick, which he certainly didn't deserve. Aurora looked at it all from the side, and couldn't understand why Dory decided not to listen to her and did what he did, because it was obvious that it was impossible to get in touch with her. As it turned out later, in fact, the worker came to her for a reason, 
somehow he felt that the old woman was about to lose consciousness, and to avoid any physical trauma, he wanted to put her on the bed. And indeed after just a few seconds, she gets dizzy and falls down. As soon as this happened, Dory started yelling for people to call 911 as soon as possible, because the old lady no longer has a pulse. At the same moment, the director ordered the filming to stop, as this is definitely not something that should be shown to people. If anyone finds out about this incident, the demand for robots will drop significantly. The doctors who were running to provide first aid, instead of thinking how to solve the problem, started to argue which of them forgot to give the medicine to the grandmother. Meanwhile, Dory had already fully analyzed the situation and reported that the old woman had lost consciousness because of her age. Even though the ambulance was on its way, the chances of it getting there in time were slim to none, because this is not some young man, this is a 118-year-old woman. In a situation like this, you have to act immediately, which is why Dory said he could administer first aid. At the same moment, Aurora runs up to him, and she thinks that this is a rash act, and that it is wrong to take any serious action before the doctors arrive. Dory explained to her that her grandmother was in a critical condition, so he was obliged to provide first aid. The girl also thought that the medicine bot had started to be a hero on purpose in order to gain more points. Dory realized who Aurora really was and what she was. It was extremely low to even think of such a thing, and no points could be more important than a person's life. After these words the girl calmed down, and at least she was comforted by the fact that the cameras were already turned off, and even if Dory did something useful, it probably wouldn't get on the screen. But as luck would have it, one of the employees had gotten the idea to pull out his cell phone and secretly start videotaping. The next day, all the major screens in the country showed a segment where Aurora was preventing her comrade from administering first aid. It was an incredible topic of discussion, and a huge disadvantage for a robot of her type. Probably due to the fact that she has too many well-developed human qualities. She is too much like a human being, at least it led to the fact that on the show she is often sly, and constantly trying to show herself in the best light. Even in that dangerous moment for the life of a man, she was thinking about glasses, not his salvation. Even was the last issue in the comments, people started to write that Dory is the opposite of Aurora, and it is better for the girl to surrender voluntarily, because the chances of getting better after such an act are extremely small. Also people started to regret that they gave so many votes for her. Looking at the whole situation from the side, the creator of this show was extremely unhappy that such an incident happened on his program. To discuss this situation, director Charlie called one of the producers, Connor, into his office and asked him why he couldn't get a grip on his situation. As you'd expect, the guy didn't have a decent answer, so he just lowered his eyes to the floor and started apologizing for the mistake he'd made. At that moment Connor was sure that he had confiscated all the phones from the employees during the shoot but it turned out not to be so. Charlie was in a good mood, and did not destroy Morley his one of the best employees, as we are all human and can make mistakes. As a result, the announcer decided not to delete the Aurora article, but instead to prepare a public speech to try to explain the situation. The next day, the text was ready, and it was up to the Aurora to simply say it. The essence of this video message was that the little girl had to explain her act publicly. Since she was the first to notice that her grandmother was in critical condition, she immediately informed the staff, so that those would call an ambulance as soon as possible. When Dory said that he was preparing to do the Yulak, Aurora started to get very worried, because no matter how you look at it, he is a very old model of a medical care bot which is why it seemed to the girl that the best option would be to refrain from carrying out the procedure. Since the wrong dose of medication could lead to very unfortunate consequences, which is why it was decided to leave Dory behind, in the girl's opinion the best solution would be to wait for the medics and put the responsibility in her hands. Anyway, the Aurora bowed her head to the audience and apologized for her seemingly despicable act. Meanwhile, in the hospital, Dory watched his patient closely, and when she regained consciousness, she immediately wondered why the little one had saved her life, after all that had happened. 
The answer was primitively simple. He is just so programmed. And under any circumstances, if a person who is near him is in critical condition, Dory will do everything in his power to save a life. Dory also said that he has a sick friend. It is a picture that is very difficult to watch. This feeling is absolutely similar to the grandmother, and to all other people. The kid can be happy about his existence only when he is surrounded by healthy people. Then he realizes that he is doing everything right. After listening to this touching story, Grandma just couldn't contain her emotions and started crying. Unfortunately for Dory, true pure emotion is unknown. From what he saw, the robot thought the patient was in pain and offered to help. Then, to cheer her up somehow, Dory turned on his small fan and directed a stream of light wind directly towards her grandmother. It really worked. Almost immediately a slight smile appeared on her face. Aurora enters the room with one of the cameramen. She went to check on her grandmother and apologize if anything was wrong. Suddenly she sees Dory standing next to her. The first thing she did, instead of just saying hello, was to ask what he was doing here. When the guy started to explain the whole situation, Orova shut him up and told the whole room that Dory was doing all these good deeds just to earn as many points as possible, so he just had to step aside now and give her the way. After that she went up to her grandmother, and instead of asking her how she was doing, she just asked to be photographed. In response to this grandmother asked to listen to her carefully. In general, the old woman started a small educational conversation with her, and hinted that if she continued to mock people, sooner or later she would have to feel how terrible people could be. And at the end of her hand, the old woman asked her to get out of here nicely before she got completely pissed off and started doing the very horrible things she had just mentioned. In that case, the Aurora decided not to linger any longer and headed for the exit with her photographer. But before she left, the Aurora urged Dory to stop this circus, because the public's attention had returned to her, and they would trust her more, and she called the propeller the guy used to cool the patient's air a useless thing. After that she simply broke it, with just a single blow with her hand. If this act was caught on camera, the viewers would probably never trust Aurora again in their lives. This competition just drives her crazy. Poor Dory is already considered not the prettiest, and now he has a broken fan. The grandmother was a direct witness to the situation, but the most important thing is that she did not stand aside and immediately asked the robot how he was doing. In the trailer he replied that everything was fine, as it was just one of the tools, but deep down he was very offended to realize what had happened. The old woman as if with her maternal instinct realized that everything was not as good as it could be, so she put her hand on his head and asked him not to get upset, because he was not like everyone else, and for this small period of time he managed to become an indispensable assistant for his grandmother. And so it is finally time for the second part of the show. Namely, the results of the first vote will be announced. Also, we remind you that the owner of the bot, which will take the first place, will receive a cash prize of 10 billion, so you should vote wisely. Now from the good news, let's move to a little sad. It's no secret that not all participants will be able to move to the second round, and who these bots are we will find out right now. According to the results of the voting, it was determined that the first round four people will be eliminated at once. Meanwhile, the naked eye can already see how much tension is on the stage. As we all remember the first task was to test communication skills, let's find out who passed it. So fourth place in this category went to a bot named Pupa. Congratulations to the little guy, he tried hard. As the presenters began to announce third place, Aurora prayed that Dory wouldn't go any further, because she felt he had some serious competition, and she didn't want that. So the third place vote goes to a bot called Pocket Slug. At first the contestants didn't even realize who it was because the robot was too small and inconspicuous. For some reason, Aurora was sure that they belonged to her and a bot named Meow Meow. She even said so to Dory. In the end, the first candidate to come in second place was Aurora, which can only mean one thing, that the dark horse of the show will be a bot named Dory. How envious and sad Aurora was at that moment, she couldn't believe her ears that Dory had managed to equal her score. In her opinion it's just impossible, 
because how can a regular tin can stand up to her, such a powerful and in all respects internally advanced robot? This situation is simply incalculable. Anyway, now we'll find out which one of them won first place. And drum roll, the first place robot pet is Aurora, and with only a small margin of votes, the little one takes the win and proves to everyone on the show that she really is number one. Well, at least now she's at peace, because if Dory had been number one, there would have been an uproar. As the light fell on the girl, it was evident to the naked eye how much she was worried after all. But it did not settle in her mind why such intense relief was felt, could it be that Dory had succeeded in making such strong competition. Before the show was to begin, Aurora had made a detailed analysis of who was going to take what place. And what was her surprise when she was wrong? Even at the very beginning she had dismissed Dory's slim chance of winning, but by some miracle he still managed to take the second place. At the same moment it dawned on her that Dory was like people, just as unpredictable. Then her train of thought was interrupted by the presenter, who began to ask her various questions, such as what it would be like to win such a contest. In order to somehow show her joy, the girl went into the mode of demonstrating an impression, this was done for the reason because she didn't really feel any impression and certainly no joy. In her speech, the little girl said that thanks to the love of all those who voted for her, she was able to win in the future she will do everything possible to fulfill the wishes of her fans, and in no case will not let her down. During the conversation, the producers noticed that something was wrong with Aurora because she was too slow to respond. To get away from the situation, the presenters informed everyone that Aurora is probably just worried. In that case, let's hear what Dory thinks about his second place. When the robot was asked if he expected to be able to take second place, the kid answered short and clear no. In principle this answer is more than enough, but now the most interesting thing is that Dory took the second place. As a prize he is entitled to one billion and the newest soaring car. As we know it has no owner, and now the question arises who will be the lucky one who will get a lot of money and a new car. Compared to the previous answer to this question was more extensive, Dory said that he wants to give his prize to someone, and even at the moment he is on this stage just for him. After such a statement absolutely everyone, both presenters and directors, became suspicious. The presenter wished him good luck and said that the robot should definitely think very carefully before giving his money to anyone. That very evening the whole internet was full of articles about Dory. Everyone was madly curious about who he was going to give his money to. To be honest, the producers didn't really like it, and they couldn't believe that people would actually be more interested in watching some ordinary medical bot than the brilliant Aurora. Also that night, Dory managed to overtake Aurora in the ratings with a whopping 3% more votes. In general, the situation was really critical, and the producer felt that something had to be done about these results. In the meantime, Dory had arrived at the hospital, and he was probably on his way to see the friend he had told his grandmother about. This man was in room number 1065. Its peculiarity is that it is a room of limited visitation of the patient. Being a normal person you cannot under any circumstances cannot enter there. But since our hero is a medical bot, he has a special key card, thanks to which he will open the door. When the opportunity to enter the room, Dory saw that his loved one was asleep. Because you do not disturb him by accident, he tried to do everything as quietly as possible. But unfortunately or fortunately no matter how hard the robot tried, to enter the room without a single noise he did not succeed. At the very least the man was surprised that the kid had come to visit him today because as a rule he was always busy these days. Anyway, Dory changed for such an unexpected visit and asked the patient how his body was doing. After these words, the patient got up, put her hand on the head of her favorite robot friend, and said that she had seen him on TV. The girl sincerely asked Dory to stop suffering so much because of her, because it was nobody's fault that she had contracted such a terrible disease. As they have been friends for a long time, Dory knows that the patient is not able to pay for his treatment, and besides him, no one can help him. This unexpected encounter triggered a very old memory for the girl. When this whole terrible journey had just begun, she was still very young. When, because of the therapy, 
her hair gradually began to fall out, this led to great hysterics, and in consequence of not accepting herself. Automatically, when a patient had a fever, Dory would always turn on her turntable, and at that moment this technique worked not only as an antipyretic, but also as a very good anti-stress. The robot even managed to cheer up a little girl who was about to lose her hair. And to be frank, it's only thanks to Dory that the girl is still alive. At least she's already embarrassed to ask him for money. In response, the kid said that she was his only friend, and he had no one else to try for, so why not just do it, because it doesn't make any difference to him. In general, despite the friend's request not to spend money on her, Dory still decided not to abandon his plan, because human life is very valuable. If there is a chance to save it, it must be done, and plus all this Katarina is his only friend. When two female fans meet Dory by chance, you can tell from their facial expressions that they're really excited about the meeting, but the robot isn't too happy, and to get rid of his recognizability he has to use a disguise, but even that doesn't help. But as it turned out, these fans are very nice girls, they came up to Dory and said that they would cheer for him with all their souls, and also called him the main favorite of the whole show. For every man or robot in this world it is very important to receive such nice compliments, because they motivate to create further. And now fast forward to the events of the next day. Dory is already fighting Aurora in a new challenge called a historical quiz, the essence of which is to be the first to press the button and give the correct answer. In case the answer is wrong, the latecomer also gets the opportunity to say. So far Dory is in the lead pressing the button first and answering every question correctly. The presenter even suggested that the robot had installed new firmware to maximize its productivity in this competition. At the end of the results, Pupa leaves the show. Now we move smoothly to the third contest, called Free Performance. Each of the participants must independently come up with some creative performance, and try to surprise the audience with it. The Meow Meow contestant decided to just dip in different colors and jump around. Aurora played a good song on the piano. But Dory approached the creative contest really with great enthusiasm. Somehow he managed to draw a whole huge picture with the help of ants. It is still unknown how he persuaded them to do it, but it turned out really grandiose. At the end of the third level, Aurora just stood there and couldn't believe that Dory had managed to reach such a high level of development in such a short period of time. And frankly speaking, the girl could also feel how the audience was becoming more interested in her opponent on a large scale. From such a close fight the audience was simply an incredible delight. It is already safe to call this show one of the most successful in recent times. One part of the audience shouted the name Aurora, the other part shouted Dory. The most important thing is that they don't get into a fight about it. Aurora, in her turn, was quietly horrified, even though she had a direct agreement with the producer about her victory. Just if the difference in votes is really too big, people will definitely suspect something wrong and call the show corrupt, which will hit the ratings hard in the end. Then in the head of the girl on the background of Strongly Depends, came to mind just a terrible idea, namely to prove her superiority over Dory, she wanted to destroy him. At this moment the robot stands and does not even suspect that Aurora can really go for some radical measures. It's time to hold the last contest to determine the winner, which will definitely put all doubts in their places, and it starts right now. At this point, the audience goes crazy, they cannot believe that they have witnessed such a kind of historical event, the fight of robots for the super prize. The judges realize that the audience has been waiting for this for a long time but according to the rules, they have to keep the entry going, even though they have been waiting for this last challenge. Please look at the screen to familiarize yourself with the rules. Only two could pass through all the stages and disappear to the finals of the pet show. The main condition of this challenge is to make people's hearts tremble. Two contestants will be given the opportunity to tell their touching, and in the end the winner will be the one whose story will be more touching, according to the results of the draw the first finalists will start, namely the Aurora. The judges are ready and right now will listen very carefully to the story of each of the participants. And so today the girl will tell us why exactly she can be considered her best friend and not anyone else. People themselves are smart, kind, sometimes evil, 
but Life Aurora always wanted to have an interesting friend. At least she and Dory came all these tests and proved their abilities. But there is one point in all of this that simply cannot go unnoticed. He is that Dory and Aurora and the trailer are made differently, and people have assigned them completely different purposes. The point of the show is to choose exactly the best pet, and according to Aurora on this one she fits exactly better. After that, one of the judges raised his hand to ask a few questions and say what he thought about it. In general, everyone knows that Aurora itself is technologically just a great robot, but this particular show is not about voting for the best robot model, it's about choosing the best friend. Then the judges just already started to press, saying that there are tens of thousands of new Auroras on the market, but specifically at this moment she needs to tell what is her clear difference from those other copies. And in general to bring out the girl received a question, what kind of heart she has, for sure many suspect that definitely not as kind as Dory's. Frankly speaking, the girl was simply at a loss for words she could not understand, she started to be buried so much, and in general, it is the air. Do the judges do not have a certain scenario, why they say whatever comes into their heads, it is not in any gates does not go. Meanwhile, Aurora was just cursing the judges. Well, the finale will probably be a little disappointing for the people who were rooting for Aurora, but no matter how you look at it, this story did not get into the hearts of the judges. Realizing the situation was finally getting out of control, the girl tried to save her. In general, according to her, the judges simply misunderstood. If we talk about the heart, we must remember that robots do not have a physical module that can be perceived as a heart. So it's safe to say that robots don't have the ability to love and feel, don't forget that. Also Aurora added that she does not look to feel bad, for example, because she was just thrown out of the house, in itself she is a friend who cannot be offended, in fact, such as she in principal heart is not needed. At one point the girl lost her sanity altogether. Such statements caused a very negative perception of the audience, and what to speak about the audience— even the judges could hardly contain their emotions. Suddenly the producer contacted the presenter and asked her to end it as soon as possible. After receiving the command, the girl immediately thanked Aurora for such a beautiful speech and kindly asked her to leave the stage, which she agreed to do without any problems, and went to the waiting room with a calm and moderate step. Well, for now we can put forward with relief, because Dory came on stage. At the same time, Aurora pleases herself that she said what she had to say, and she's sure that smart people understood her correctly. It's time to get away from that hypocritical Aurora and turn her attention to the beautiful, good-natured robot Dory, who unlike her definitely has a heart. Frankly speaking, the kid was very worried and did not even know what to tell about himself, so he decided to tell about his close friend, it is not difficult to guess that it will probably be about the very person to whom Dory wants to give his prize. In general, nothing has not even started yet, and the judges and viewers have already been delighted, some even began to envy Katarina, but they do not know the fact that the girl long ago bettered in, and requires just fantastic money for her treatment, which to earn simply no possibility. In fact, this man is Dory's very first patient and he has been regularly cared for by the robot in the hospital for a very long time, and it hasn't ended yet. Even in his most difficult moments, he has found the strength not to give up on the patient, and has continued to help him. The girl was very withdrawn at the time, but that's not surprising given the diagnosis she'd been given, not every person can accept it, or even put up a fight. One day, Dory, as a guardian, reached out his hand to check the patient's temperature. Katerina was a little frightened and even pushed him away, but it was a good thing that it took a second to realize that the patient's body temperature had risen too much. Despite this categorical lack of cooperation, Dory tried to do everything for the good of his patient. For example, to lower the temperature at least a little, he took out his fan and directed a stream of book cool air directly in the direction of the girl. At that moment her reaction could not be compared with anything. For some reason the girl liked this fan so much that for a moment forgot about all her problems. As a result, the fan for cooling the air got a slightly different name, namely the chopper. 
after which the boiler room instilled a very bright desire to be friends with Dory. Of course, before starting a friendship, you should at least introduce yourself to each other. At that time the robot did not even have a name, so he just called his model. But unfortunately this arrangement did not suit Katarina, so she personally decided to come up with a name for him. Since then, the medical robot is called Dory. In the trailer he was not against it, and their strong friendship after many years holds until today. Since Katarina was a regular client in the hospital, she had plenty of time to communicate with Dory, and at one point it even turned into doing homework together. Of course at first Dory didn't understand anything, but then he started to understand his own, and helped as much as he could. And when there was free time, the guys shared the joy for two, in time they even had a tradition, every evening to look at the stars, and look for some interesting constellations there. Also the baby was always present in the most difficult moments for the girl, namely injections, which a day had to do a very large number. As time passed, Katerina began to realize that her treatment process was taking too long, and it was not certain that she would be able to overcome the disease, and thoughts crept into her head that she would probably have to stay in the hospital until the very last days of her life. 